got a different one, yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, on that note, three, two, one. Welcome back to another episode of the Have We Made It Yet podcast. Although we have, of course, our introduction and everything, I do want to put it out there. This is episode 50, five, zero. Thanks, Josh. Or, or, or if I'm flip reverse, then, it, then it's this. So it's that or this, depending on how, you're, how you look at it. Nice. This is the podcast where two creatives and their guests talk about the process of making it. My name's Lucas Ng, the actor portion of this podcast, and I'm joined by my co-host... Josh Yang, the comedian portion of this uh, podcast. I'm the I'm uh, Lucas. I guess is supposed to be the straight man. I'm supposed to be the the punchline, the punch punchline man. Actually, the straight man, the funny man. It, it, it is a straight man. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So good cop, bad cop. I guess I'm the that would make me the bad cop because then you'd be the good. Because I don't know. Because the comedian is anyways. Anyways, yes. Welcome back to another ep- the fiftieth episode, the bicentennial episode of uh, of the Have We Made It Yet podcast. We've asked that question so many times over, and uh, <laughs> I feel like we've gotten some good answers now. Oh, beautiful question! Yeah. Uh, beautiful answers. Yeah, um, you y- you just reminded me when you said "good cop, bad cop." I'm not sure if you've seen a movie with uh, Mark Wahlberg and Will Ferrell, the good guys. Oh yeah, yeah. And they were both the bad cop in that one interrogation scene. <laughs> It killed me. It yeah, killed me. yeah. Uh, I thought that was a, that was actually. I think one of the funniest shots out of that film was still like Samuel L. Jackson and The Rock just jumping <laughs> off the film to to. Uh, I forgot who sang the song, but your uh, there goes my hero. That that song, Foo Fighters. Yeah, yeah. Foo Fighters, and then it just yeah. keep going and then splat right on a uh, perfect. That was just the f- perfect comedic uh, bit. Exactly. Um, as is the namesake of her podcast. Mr. Josh Yang, and if you could also answer this question, the only question with a joke, have you made it yet? No, I, I haven't made it yet. And, you know, jokes are jokes are hard to come by, you know, they, they're 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 um, they're they're rough around the around the edges in the beginning. Sometimes they're just concepts. Um, and, you know, it's been uh, I've been hitting a bit of a wall when it comes to getting new jokes, especially considering like I've only been in th- these four walls for the last month across winter. But oh, the man. best, the best. OK, maybe not the best, but like the thing I could get out of it was like a, a, maybe a tag. I ca- came up with a tag for some of my other a series of jokes where it's like, you know, I'm making fun of how I how much I don't do drugs. Oh, OK. So, so it's like uh, this one, this additional tag is uh, when I don't do drugs. So whenever I smoke weed, my tomatoes get riper and redder and live longer. And yeah, you know, so that's what so that's what's that's what's up. That's what's it's <laughs> been hey, like man. writing jokes for the last last month. And so and uh, but yeah. Uh, maybe it'll get better maybe in the it'll the jokes will get better in the second 50 episodes that we do of this bro it has legs because being super straight edge is also just as hilarious Mm, yeah it's got to be super straight edge with uh juxtaposing my monotone voice but um Mm -hmm. hey you know what lucas Mm -hmm. i feel like you might have some better news have you made it yet um no I have not made it yet. Um, no auditions this week, but at the same time, you know, I'm kind of happy. I don't have to do much because I'm not really feeling myself right now. Oh, um, I feel that. I feel that. Oh, yeah. I'm just, I just did a meditation session just before doing this recording. Great app that my, that my therapist recommended me. I did it. I fell asleep. <laughs> I mean, um, so that means you won. You won the meditation. <laughs> I meditated so hard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but no, I mean, I, I do have a self submission that I need to do after this recording and also, um, yes. Okay. So I think that answers, I have not made it yet, but I'm trying to push myself, but shout out to my mom. It's her birthday today. Oh, happy birthday. Yeah. Lucas's you. mom. Oh, and this yeah. is her through me. Oh, thank you, Josh. Oh, oh, you're welcome. Lucas's mom. Um, yeah, she's, uh, it's her birthday today. So it's. I'm happy for her. I wish I could be there, but happy birthday, mom. And when you see this, it will be already a week away, but happy birthday. Love you. 
Um, we have a great guest today, Josh. Oh, do we? Do we? Yes. For mm. episode 50, nothing but the best. Nothing but the nicest. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, I wonder if they can see that. Maybe. Hmm. Maybe. Mm, mystery. Mystery. But back when I signed with my first agency, I noticed that our guest tonight is and also is still on a booking spree. I'd always see her lauded as a prime example of what happens when you put in the work. She was booking so many commercials and gigs that I remember one time I was on Instagram while watching TV and she was on my TV and my Instagram ads at the same time. And I couldn't believe it. I'm like, I, I need to, I need to talk to her. Like she's, she's putting in the work and, and the fruits of the labor are, are coming into fruition. So I'm so happy we have her on today uh, through research, through researching her. I'm learning more about her worth ethic as it's second to none and her strive to be better and do better in this industry is something that I really want to admire and something that I really want to emulate too. So our next guest is an extremely talented actor who has appeared in numerous commercials for Campbell's, Air Miles, Etsy, etc. Her most recent appearances have been in the Hallmark productions of Love at Look Lodge and The Christmas Scavenger Hunt. Her experience in front and also behind the camera are invaluable and I'm really excited to have her on. Please give it up for the amazing Janice Mendez. Hello, Janice. How are you doing? Hey, guys. I'm so good. Thank you so much for having me. No, no. Thank you for coming on. Um, as we start off with every episode, though, Janice, have you made it yet? Well, fellas. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Done. Yeah. Episode 50. Episode 50. Yeah. That's a that's a yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So, I'm I'm being a little bit facetious. I <laughs> I have made um I kept I keep hitting goals. Yeah. So, I feel like I keep making it. <laughs> but then I, I, then I keep moving my goal. So I have not made it <laughs> because I want to do more and I don't want to stop doing more. Yeah. So in that regard, I'll say, no, I haven't made it. But in the regard of taking a shot at becoming an actor, like, especially at this point in my life, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I feel like, I've made a certain a, a certain level of accomplishment that I'm really proud of, for sure. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, what, of course, like we, I, I listed out like some projects that you've been on, some commercials, and also some uh, movies that you've been on too. But with that feeling of making it, uh, what in your current history right now have you have you kind of stood back sometimes and said, "Wow, this is a making it moment for you." Um. Wow. So there was one of the first commercials that I ever did was uh, shown at the Super Bowl. Wow. And right. Yeah. I was like, yo, even I know that's kind of cool. Like, yeah. Right. So uh -huh. that's what I mean when I say like, I've made it. Like I haven't no. made, you know, but at certain points you're like, yo, well, I made that. Uh -huh. I was part of that. That exactly. got there. So, wow. and then also at the, at the Raptors playoffs, I had, I think two commercials that were running and yeah, I mean, n I don't think any actor really gets into acting to do commercials, mm -hmm. but it's such good work and it's such a great feeling to be able to, you know, to even talk about this stuff and be like, yeah, that was my big old face up there on the, <laughs> at the Super Bowl or the Raptors playoffs. So, no yeah. doubt. Yeah, it was definitely during the Raptors playoffs that, that I saw you like both times on my phone and also <laughs> on my TV. I'm like, this, she's incredible. <laughs> like, <laughs> wow. Um, awesome. Okay, thank you so much for that. Uh, so through researching you, I, I also saw that, um, you know, you've had, of course, your career in front of the camera, but also see like earlier back in 2006 and 07 that you've also been behind the camera, such as a set dresser, art department coordinator, and also like producer's assistant. Was that your first taste of showbiz? Mm -hmm. 
Nice. Yeah, it's it was a crazy journey. I mean, I think you guys have probably learned this since doing this show that nobody, there's not one straight arrow or one straight path to how we get here, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I spent a number of years as a children's counselor and a child and youth worker. And um, yeah, at, it was in my thirties that I was like, you know what? I want to try something else. And mm -hmm. this was the industry of film and television was something that had always really intrigued me. I love storytelling. I love, um, you know, I love beautiful pictures. And I, so I was like, Oh, I kind of want to do this. Mm -hmm. So I did it. Nice. I went, yeah, I quit my job. I went back to school. People thought it was local, but, uh, <laughs> uh, -huh. uh, yeah. And I mean, I did one of those accelerated programs and the school was kind of not the best, but mm. what was amazing about it was that the teachers that were there were still working in the industry. Oh, cool. And so my very first job, one of my teachers was like, Hey, do you think you could help us out with this? Mm -hmm. And it was on a feature film, uh, low budget feature film, but still I was like, hell, that's cool. Okay. Yeah. And from there I just started working and I didn't know exactly what part of um, the film and television world that I wanted to be in. Mm -hmm. I just knew that it really intrigued me. So I wanted to try a little bit of everything. Yeah. So that's, that's why, you know, and when you look at my history, I've really, um, I love the art department. I love, you know, set dressing and making, uh, creating a scene that really draws people in. To me, that's a beautiful part of, um, you know, the whole acting world or, yeah. or the whole production world. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, everything. So, um, but yeah, a couple of years ago, I thought I wanted to try. Mm -hmm. What would it be like to, if I could book something? <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. So that leads me to my next question then. Uh, of course, like you've had plenty of great experiences also doing school with with learning how to just behind the camera. What was your turning point that made you turn into acting? Um, man, well, okay, a couple things. Cool. So I think uh, one of the things that really drew me in was that I, uh, I'm also a writer. Mm. And I the way that I see a story, the story, a story that I'm telling, <laughs> I know the way that I want it done. Nice. And then I started thinking, can I do that? Can <laughs> I, and I knew that I could, but then I started thinking like, well, can I do this and get paid for it? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> uh -huh. Right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I had, uh, I had been, you know, at the time, and actually I still have a full-time job with the Discovery Channel, mm. but I was like, let me just do something part-time and see if, um, you know, see if I can get a, an acting gig. Mm -hmm. And uh, a friend who I would, he was an actor and I would help him read lines and uh, he told me to talk to his agent and mm -hmm. that's what I did. Awesome, awesome. And of course, like... Did you did you book your first audition, by any chance? Uh, I I did. Wow! <laughs> yeah, I booked oh. my my first three auditions. Oh, three! <laughs> first three? So yeah, so you were you were batting a thousand after three ad auditions. I was like, yo, this is this is a joke. <laughs> like somebody is <laughs> somebody is joking. There is no way. And and let me also uh, preface it by saying they weren't like huge national um, commercials. They were still fairly low budget and small, and but it's still really respectable work, right? And yeah. we all know, like a booking is a booking, and it's like ah, what? And then I'm like what? What? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah. The odds were definitely in your favor for for those three uh, those three commercials. How was it? Um... I guess, I mean, because we also talk a lot about, um, you know, having to deal with like rejection and then like, you know, uh, the highs and lows of the process, having gone through like, like hit three in a row, like at what point, I guess, did, um, how was that feeling when it felt like, oh, now things are slowing down a bit is like, were there moments there where it's like you had to re-motivate yourself during the early process? Um. I definitely had moments, um, you know, we've, we've all had opportunities that, you know, when you audition and you know, you blow it mm -hmm. 
and you just know you're like I sucked so hard (laughs) (laughs) I had a couple of those and I was like all right well that was a fun fluke that I nailed those guys and now you know like I'll probably never do it again um but I don't I'm I'm actually a pretty positive person and a pretty happy person so I was like all right well I'll just keep going and see what happens and then yeah, so I've definitely had my peaks and valleys, but it's it's been such like there's so much in the journey that is um, that goes beyond getting a booking, mm-hmm. you know, so, so much like even meeting people, the connections that you meet and um, other like good, just good, decent people who also know how, you know, like you want to book and and people who encourage you and, and help keep you on that path. So yeah, it's the whole thing has been such a really, really cool journey. Awesome. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. Of course you've had, again, your experiences behind the camera too. I also saw that you've been in the casting department for like American pie and also the grassy too. Mm-hmm. I think one of the major, I guess like mental battles that I think actors sometimes face is like, we feel casting is working against us. Like we almost have to feel like, it's a battle that we have to win them over somehow. Um, now that you've seen it from the other side, like you yourself has been an actor or are an actor and also has work in casting. Is there anything that you can say from a casting's perspective that can help actors give their best performance so they don't feel like they constantly have to battle casting and also themselves? Oh man, that's a demon that lives in everybody's head, yeah, you know? Yeah. Because I think um, casting directors, I think, and I'm speaking very general because it's been a long time since I was on that side of the pond, but uh, it was very valuable. I got to work a little bit with Stephanie Gorin and, Mm. um, and yeah, she's a really amazing woman. She has such a great talent or eye for talent. What I can tell you is that I do think that certain casting directors build relationships with certain actors that they know have a good reputation, that they, uh, they're professional, that they, um, and that they can nail what have you. So I do think that there's something to be said for, um, you know, building a relationship with a casting director, but at the same time, I think that they're also really fair and there's um, you know, you never know what people are looking for. So there's such a wide spectrum Um People just, you know, I think we just have to keep on delivering the best performance we can every time we yeah. we do it. And especially now that we're doing self tapes, we're not actually yeah. getting to get in the room. Sometimes that was a benefit, right? When you mm-hmm. could be in the room and there was a bit of banter between you and the casting director or, or whoever was there. Um, mm-hmm. So that's been eliminated now. So I think that this forum, because of COVID, it's definitely changed the playing field. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so I, I'm not sure. I, I do think that this maybe has, is a different uh, advantage for new faces to get seen. Yeah, d- definitely. And, and if anything, just more, it's more, um, what is it, more quantity, just because like many people can send tapes from anywhere. And mm-hmm. anything. Very true. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what, what would you say is your biggest no? Because of course, like you, you, you've seen casting in person. Um, are there any like definite no's that you know definitely don't do as an actor when you're going into the room? Oh, yeah, we know. There's a bazillion no's don't do. Yeah. Like don't, you know, like um, you want to make sure that you keep your, your um, introduction and yourself kind of short and sweet and professional. <laughs> Uh, get in there. Don't jammer. Don't blabber. Like, yeah, I tend yeah. to blabber. So I always have to make sure I'm like, all right. <laughs> Pull the plug. Yeah. 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 Um, like, yeah. You know, no, things like I, that. Definitely. Yeah. I've seen some like long winded actors. I just want to make sure that they like are memorable to the casting director, but man, it's like, it's not about you right now. It's about the part. So like right. show the work, not yourself. Right. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And I mean, sometimes people are just, yeah, they, they, that's just their personality, but it's definitely beneficial to kind of know how to read the audience and, and um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, when to make small talk and, and when to just, uh, you know, keep it moving. Yeah. Yeah. It's totally true. Josh, like, I'm sure, you know, like read through, man. Wait, what? Sorry. I, I got oh. lost. Read through. Oh, re- read the room. 
a reader Winter there. Thing. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I could I could imagine. I always wonder. I haven't done any auditions myself. Like I haven't really gone that avenue in terms of doing comedy. For me, I'm I just started really recently, so I'm really just still focused on the comedy element. But I know like going to auditions like uh, either commercials or any kind of acting work is another avenue for comedians. And I always just imagine like. I can imagine a comedian going into an audition wanting to crack jokes and like just as part of the just the, their natural personality. I'm wondering if you've ever experienced that, like if you kind of had some audition knees, some, some people coming into audition, just like cracking jokes. And if, if that even helps during uh, auditions. <laughs> Sometimes like I'm because I'm a joker. I love to it always eases tension, right? Like right. just to be a little silly and what have you. But sometimes they're just like, lady, you need to just, sorry, did I lose you? My camera did something. Um, Yeah. So sometimes uh, cracking the jokes is just not the way to go. (laughs) Yeah. And like, that's, that's, that could definitely be a a very like high risk, high reward situation where it's like, (laughs) you're you're a comedian and like, say like you just crack a joke and it goes bad. Oh, (laughs) dude, I could just totally imagine that person just be like, Oh no, that's even, that's like my worst, their worst nightmare. Cause like an actor is probably like, bombing in an audition setting and a comedian's worst nightmare is just bombing in front of a person where the other person doesn't laugh so it's like a double down <laughs> just walk i just walk right out um i, I want to ask you more about like your, your current your current work right now because like 2019 and 2020 seems like a really big year for you with like mm-hmm. booking untold stories of the er and your two movies chris christmas scavenger hunt and also love it look lodge which are I was looking at your demo reel. Like you have some really pointed scenes in there. Those are awesome. Thank um, you. Yeah, no problem. Uh, how did it feel to have such a big year and finally, like booking some of those romantic roles with a with a story arc for yourself? How did that finally feel? Oh man, so good. Nice. So nice. good, especially. Um, yeah, it felt. You know, there's there's definitely a difference between uh, commercial bookings and. Um, a dramatic booking. Mm -hmm. So being able to, um, being able to actually put on a character and pretend to be somebody else, like not just to, to sell, you know, soup, Mm -hmm. (laughs) but to, to actually move a story along is um, yeah. It's such a fun experience. Nice. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Like, like your role as Charmaine was it was pretty cool you know like like having that arc yourself must have been because sorry you, you're just your, your scenes in there were so, um like you needed to have range in there you need to have your comedic bits but also your harsh dramatic bits too but was it hard to to find the balance with, between the two extremes of your character no i loved it <laughs> I loved it. It was so nice, fun. Nice. I mean, but Charmaine was a wacko because she was like stalking her sister everywhere she went. She was like, what are you doing in there with that guest? So yeah, she yeah. was a little, Charmaine was high strung. I like Charmaine. I'm like, awesome. Charmaine she has too much coffee. <laughs> um, <laughs> can you go into the process of first auditioning for that? Oh, first of all, like prepping for the audition and going into it and eventually having the news that you booked it can you go through that process oh yeah so it was um it was actually a self-tape and um we shot that in ottawa Mm -hmm. so um yeah when i did the self-tape i have um i i have a great space or i had a great space where i used to do my self-tapes so Mm -hmm. i did a lot of prep for it um I tried not to, I get in my head a lot and I tried not to do that and allowed myself to just have fun with the character and not take it too serious. Mm -hmm. Um, Because especially Hallmark is a pretty lighthearted, you know, like you want to, you obviously want to take it serious, but it's not like you're not telling somebody's, you know, life, life story about, you know, anything dramatic. So Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I prepped for it. I had a great reader. We shot it in a, amazing location it was well lit i think it looked good all of those things you know like i think Mm -hmm. there definitely is something to be said for making sure that you're put together like the character should be that you um 
you know, it, it's, it's not just about memorizing the words, but it's definitely more about memorizing the situation and the feeling mm-hmm. that you're trying to convey. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I was happy with my self tape. And when I sent it in, they, um, yeah, I've got, I, I didn't even get a call back. Oh, wow. It was, yeah, I think I was booked on the first one. So, but I don't know, maybe that's what they do for those movies. Um, I don't really know the process, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it was such an amazing, I'm like, what? I booked it. And because that was a really substantial role too. Yeah. So um, yeah, it felt, uh, that felt really fun. Awesome. And and when you arrived on set, did it like, did you have immediate nervousness or excitement? How was that feeling when you came on set the first day? Man, boy, I was nervous as all hell. <laughs> oh. I was like, oh, they're going to know. I don't know what I'm doing. They're going to know. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. But no, after, and then I was like, I sat in my car. I'm like, okay. I'm here. What am I not going to go in? <laughs> so, yeah. No, I, I pulled it together and uh, I was good and, and it turned out to be great. And again, the people that I worked with help. They're just so good, right? Like mm-hmm. it makes for such a good experience when um, people are encouraging and welcoming and yeah. uh, that really takes the edge off. And it's like, okay, you know what? These people see it in me. I can do this. So um, yeah, being a new actor, there's so many jitters, but uh, yeah, it helps when you when you have good people and good energy around you for sure. Mm-hmm. Does that um, does it also improve? I guess the general morale because I know you know when you're on set there can be periods of a lot of action and then a lot of downtime. So like, how was how was like your experience? You know, uh, managing that downtime, especially like with your other cast members. Oh, so fun. So fun. Yeah. Like it wasn't a huge um, cast or crew, but everyone was really nice. Um, Like Sammy in the hair department. I just absolutely fell in love with Sammy. So that's my person. And I would go and hang out with Sammy every chance I got. Um, Or even, yeah, just other cast members or there's always somebody there and, you know, craft a table is always around yeah <laughs> <laughs> we all like to eat so yeah it was really fun oh my god um honestly props like like i can see only things like getting bigger and bigger for you so hopefully 2021 we'll see more things for you there <laughs> thank you awesome. i hope so yeah um i also recently saw that uh you gone to the union yes 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 <laughs> yeah. yes i i decided to make the jump from non-union yeah that's awesome. Um, you know, like for myself too, one of my goals that I want to accomplish sooner rather than later is to join the union. Um, what advice can you give to actors that are striving to get into the union and what can they, what can they do to speed that process? Um, well, unfortunately there's nothing you can really do to, to speed it up, but mm-hmm. uh, I definitely think I, I didn't know how to approach it at first, Mm. you know, and, and again, we said there's no straight path for this. Some people like to hang out in the non-union sector. I, I did two years, uh, non-union. And, um, so I worked on a lot of great projects. I got a lot of great experience. Um, I did union jobs while I was non-union, but I Mm. just kept getting permits. I kept on buying a permit. I didn't, I didn't think I was ready to actually join the union. Um, and that was just a personal thing. I, I didn't think that I had the chops to go up against the union actors, um, especially, again, you know, there's some business savvy that you have to think yeah. about this because um, a, a woman at my age, um, actors who are now seasoned in the city who have been um, who already have the reputations with the casting directors, as we were speaking about, Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going up against those people. So I didn't know if I was going to be ready for the union world. So I was happy to do the non-union stuff for a while. Mm -hmm. Um, But eventually if you want to be an actor and you want to grow, you got to like it. If when the opportunity presents itself, yeah, make Mm -hmm. a move, bro. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> totally, totally. Yeah. Uh, are there any projects that you're really eyeing on right now for the union projects that you really want to be on? 
oh, I would love an opportunity for any of like this is and this is why I love Toronto, by the way. Right. Mm -hmm. Like big props to Canada. We're a great country. But I love that we have so many Netflix um, um, projects shooting here. Amazon Prime. Like there is so Mm -hmm. many opportunities. Obviously, right now, COVID is a bit of a stinker and it's kind of put a wrench in things. But Mm -hmm. There is still no end of opportunities for shooting in in Toronto um, and in Canada as a whole. So yeah. yeah, I would love. I mean, yeah, I don't have my eye on anything. I'm not because I ain't like that. What do you think I got? I, I can call out my projects. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Manifest them into fruition. I love okay, it. yeah, I like it from your lips to God's ears, right? Yeah, <laughs> I love it there. Um, so also from researching you too, like of course we talked at the beginning about the hard work that you put into your training and, 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 you know, getting into those audition rooms and everything like that. You've trained with, uh, you know, LB acting studio, you trained with Jeb beach and everything like that too. Um, you know, it's a lot of hard work that you have to put into those hours to make sure that you, when the opportunity presents itself to book those parts and everything. Uh, what are a few things that you've learned from LB from Jeb beach that you think helped you ace those auditions in 2019? Um, oh man, there's so many things, even just about delivering lines. And, Mm. um, you know, when I first started, I kind of thought there was a way that I would act and, um, learning that even as an actor, I'm allowed to switch up my style. Mm. Right. So that's (laughs) something that, that, um, I've learned in class, um, yeah, there's just, there's definitely such valuable um, lessons to be taught from taking classes. And um, yeah, I I'm definitely can't wait for the next round. I want to do some one-on-one coaching. Yeah. There's some, yeah, there's some actors that I really admire. And there's some areas in myself that I recognize that I want to work on. Mm. So um, mm. yeah, there's some coaches that I'd, I'd like to get to work with. Awesome. Hmm. Yeah. When you, when you mention like areas that you want to work on, is that um, more on like an emotional range or is it kind of like technique or, or physicality or something like that? Yeah, probably a bit of both to be Hmm. honest. Yeah. I think um, definitely on an emotional range um, there's certain aspects of uh, you know, people are so dynamic Mm -hmm. and I'd like, I, I want to uh, stretch myself a little bit and, and bring some more uh, a dark side out of oh, me. So yeah. Uh, yeah, I would really love to work with an acting coach to, to bring more of that out. Nice. And I, I assume um, since like you mentioned that you, you did some writing as well and, and that element uh, actually also in terms of comedians they I would imagine what they do not only on stage, it's a lot of it is writing. You either write, you always have to write your own material or you write for other projects um, as a source of, you know, expanding your career. I guess taking your point of view from as a writer and then approaching, you know, these t- character roles or, or approaching the acting of uh, acting craft of it. How has that helped in like translating what you read on the page for an actor and then putting that out there in a performance? Um, well, I've learned to break down scripts in different ways. Um, um, also, you know, like we were just talking about adapting your performance to something, uh, that sometimes a character, a certain way that you think the character will be played. Um, sometimes you have to really work with yourself to find a different way to, to, still be that same person. Mm -hmm. Um, That's one of the things about humans being so multifaceted, right? Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, there's, I don't know if I answered that question. (laughs) Well, yeah, I think, I think in in terms of it, it is tough to really, from what I've learned, like I I never had much experience with like scripts or um, kind of reading or interacting with them, but then just even the strict script structure and like writing it, I realized sometimes there's not that much information on the page and it can be Mm -hmm. tough to extract or interpret. And then it's up to other people's jobs for uh, extracting and interpreting that. Is there, is there like some kind of advice or like technique you've, you've 
discovered yourself when it comes to translating that um, from the words or is it like, or is it a general feel and you're, you're translating more of a feel and tone from the character? Yeah, I, I definitely, yeah, I think you would say a feel and a tone mm. because sometimes with these scripts, you're only given a few pages and you don't have, and, and you might have a bit of a character breakdown and, um, but it's really, you have this little playground to create somebody. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, and that's where actors are artists because we're developing a personality. And mm -hmm. so we interpret the words and, and the scene and the scenario. And then we're like, okay, so how, how do we think that that should be portrayed and then try and, and tell that story. Sometimes we nail it. Sometimes we're way off, but um, yeah, I think the more you do it, the, the, the better you get at it. Yeah. No doubt. No doubt. Um, one word that has been, been kind of inundated to me right now, as I was like looking through for rep representation, everything like that was the word hit. Um, have you found a specific genre or hit that you really want to excel in? Oh, I would love, I would love to do long form stuff, anything long form, right? So nice. uh, again, any of those series work would be great. Yeah. Um, I play, I play the, um, um, what's it called? Um, ethnically ambiguous mom. Oh. <laughs> Very okay. well. I've nailed that. <laughs> I've nailed that category. I'm there. Yeah. I am. I am. They, they're like, we don't know what race she is. And she's a mom. <laughs> so, um, or somebody's wife. Those are the characters that I know I've, I've, I can get paid doing. Nice. Uh, yeah, I would love to, <clears throat> to do, to really work on some dark stuff. Um, yeah. Um, and I love dark comedy. So mm -hmm. yeah, that would be so fun. Oh, really? Like What's, um, can you, what, what would be like one of your favorite dark comedies? Um, well, so, okay, because I'm, I guess I'm thinking mostly about series now. And I don't know if, if this is considered dark comedy, but one of my favorite series of all times is, uh, and sorry if this, now as I say it, I'm like, oh, it sounds so whack. It's so pedestrian. But um, is Baking, Breaking Bad. Mm. Yeah, right? Absolutely, yeah. I There are so many beautiful moments in that that are funny, like fucking hilarious. <laughs> but also so twisted and disturbed. <laughs> mm -hmm. And they did such a beautiful job about um, like the character arcs are so, so nicely done. You know what I mean? Like you really got to know the people and, and have personal relationships with them. So yeah, something like that. Woo, love it. Sign me up. Yeah. Cause I mean, the way, the way I see it as well, like in terms of darkness, like you can, even if you go into the darkest concepts or darkest like portrayals or, or ideas, just the, the mere element of that tension will just, there will have to be moments of their, like whether intended or not, where there is levity because like either mm -hmm. whatever you create on the screen or however an audience interprets it, like something could mm -hmm. just like throw a, an audience member off and it could be in the darkest scenes, but they just find something so funny because that tension is built up and it needs to be released. Mm -hmm. um, so I feel like, yeah, in terms of darkness and comedy, like you can't do one without the other. Yeah, for sure. For sure. No I agree. Yeah. Uh, we can't wait to see a villain Janice one day. It's going to be dope. Would that be yeah. fun? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I know like for comedians mindset, sometimes you can like replay a bunch of stuff in your head. Just be like, oh, what if I did this? What if I did that? You know, and that's something like I'm pretty sure everybody goes through. How, how have you kind of like tried managing or tampering those type of like thoughts or ideas down? I just let it go. Let it I go. just let it go. Nice. Yeah, I really do. I try not to be one of those. I, sometimes, you know, I like I said, I'm a pretty happy person. I'm a pretty yeah. positive, upbeat person. Things usually work out. So when something doesn't work out, it just doesn't work out. Like whatever mm. is for you is uh, it's for you. It's just for you. It's mm -hmm. just yeah. for you. So, yeah. you know what I mean? If it doesn't work out, guess what? It wasn't supposed to be because it wasn't for you. So yeah, things I, and they're all just part of the journey that you have to appreciate to get to where you want to go. So any of the things that didn't work out, 
yeah, I'm still, I'm thankful for them, but I don't hold on to them unless it's something, unless it's a lesson like that. Right. I have to be like, okay, note to self. Don't ever do that again. <laughs> <laughs> True. Yeah. Um, almost. So we'll, we'll end off with this question here. Um, you did mention before that, uh, your goalposts constantly keep on like getting into bigger and bigger goals because you have accomplished so much already within your time as an actor there. Uh, what is the next goal? What is the next goal post? Um, I would love to land a series. Nice. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's, that's my next goal post for sure. Yeah. Nice. A series regular yeah. or like a, a spot day player. I'm going to just say series. But, Yay! Uh, yeah, and then and then let the universe figure out what the rest is supposed to be. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. can we say comedy or drama or action? What would be your um, genre? Well, I would love to do a comedy. Dark, dark Ooh. comedy though. Dark, dark comedy. Dark, darker, yeah. dark, <laughs> dirty old comedy. Dark. dark, dark. <laughs> awesome. Uh, yeah, let's go to word association from here, Josh. Yeah, oh. sure thing. Let's now it's the if if you <laughs> if you were worried uh, about like rambling, well, now is the time to ramble or like let your mind wander because pew, we're pew. Get, okay. We're getting into the word association part of our okay. episode uh, where Lucas and I will have 10 words. Uh, we'll go through our list and with a clear mind, no immediate thoughts, which whichever word you hear, the first word you hear, second word you hear, you would say the first word that comes to mind or maybe an image or maybe an idea or maybe a memory um it's all good uh from there and uh yeah we'll just play and see what happens okay. it's like nobody knows what's gonna happen okay let's <laughs> okay go. uh good right luck. so how about i start off and then uh lucas will be able to uh finish it off so janice clear your mind let everything go and your first word is family. Love. Pineapple. Ooh, tropical. Rain. Wet. Alone. Pleasant. Motivation. Upbeat. Kumquat. Come what? <laughs> come kumquat. I know what came to mind was come what. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> nice, nice. Mountain. Move it. Tightrope. Walking. Satisfied. Soul. And finally, ending. Never. Ooh, never ending. <laughs> like well <it>. done. <clears throat> All right. Are you ready for the next time? Oh, I think so. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Get to that again. Yes. 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 Feel it. Feel it. Look. Like, oh, I have my my. These are my meditation beads. So. Oh. oh. Yeah. I forgot. I didn't even realize I was playing with them. Oh. Okay. Nice. All right. Okay. Your first word of 10. Scarborough. Prepping. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> next word. Uh, next word. Nice. Loving. Nice. Uh, goal. Football. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, are, are you gonna watch the Super Bowl? Um, pr um, I, what else are we doing? These yeah, days? <laughs> <That's true. laughs> what else? What else? <laughs> good answer. Good answer. Um, next one. Uh, sacrifice. Mm, goals. Oh, okay. Uh, agent. Booking. There we are. Skills. Practice. Nice. 90s. Best hip hop ever. Nice. My next word is related. R&B. Hip hop. Nice. And the last one, Janice. 
with love. Oh, there we are. <laughs> there we are. Give it up for Janice Mendez. Woo. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. No problem. Thank you. Uh, where can people find you? What are your social media handles? Um, probably on Instagram uh, is the best place. And Sweet. I go under niceness.me. Um, and yeah, I'm just, I'm a good vibes person. And I love to just collaborate with other artists and storytellers on many different levels. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Hit her up there on Instagram. Hit me um, yeah. Uh, Josh, where can people find you? uh same handle across everything at josh and comedy and of course i got still got to plug the sleep with josh podcast it's my uh sleep aid podcast where i read generally boring stuff like laws the dictionary um the weather I, i've read the weather a couple of times uh in my monotone voice so you could check that out as well and um lucas hey what are your handles uh i, I will say so in a second but dude to be honest I've heard more dy dynam dynamicism in your voice now. Like I hear a really? lot of peaks oh. and valleys now. So oh, may maybe it's uh, maybe it's I can't keep it mo so monotone all the time. I guess that's that's my range. My range is to go from like here to like here. That's that's, <laughs> my, that's the difference I need to make. That'd be big for me. Nice. You nailed it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you nailed it, Josh. Um, everyone can find me across social media at Lucas John Hing. And if you like it, if you like what you see and hear, you can follow us at HWMIY Podcast on YouTube, Spotify, wherever you, you watch and listen to your podcast. And also check back next week for more guests as we continue to make it. Yeah, give it up for Janice one more time. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. Awesome. All right. See you all next week. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs>